However, this car has given the world a problem because, you see, for years, I know loads of people who've always had 5 Series BMWs, they've all looked at this and went, that is so ugly, there's no way I'm going to have one. So it leaves them a problem. What do they buy? Well, eventually, they're going to have to have something done with their teeth. And while the dentist has got his bit in their mouths, he's going to say, I've got a Saab. All dentists have Saab, OK? All, and graphic designers all have them, and all architects have them, and all Stephen Fry's have them. <laughs> and when you ask someone who's got a Saab why, you always get the same patronising smile. Like, they know something we don't, OK? And I think I've worked out what it is, OK? I think it's because they spend all day doing root canals. Then when they drive home, they think, I'm not a dentist, I'm Chuck Yeager. <laughs> Saab has been telling us for years that their cars are jets with number plates. The message is clear, buy a 9.5 and you'll be able to blast a hole in the sound barrier and manoeuvre up your own tailpipe. Really? I mean, do jet fighters have handbrakes, for instance, or ignition keys down here, or electric windows, or a cup holder? I actually asked a bloke from Saab the other day what elements of this come from the aeronautical industry, and all he could come up with was this night panel button on the dashboard, which turns all the lights and most of the dials off at night. That's it. <laughs> That's handy if you want to line up for a bombing run on a Soviet nuclear submarine base. But of limited use on the A38 just outside Burton on Trent. There are other differences too. The plane takes off at 137 miles an hour. The car doesn't. The plane is made by Saab. The car is made by General Motors. And finally, the plane uses a Volvo engine. Now, what I'd like to do at this point to demonstrate the difference between car and plane even more is bolt the Stig into the Saab here and have him race a fighter jet round our track. The <laughs> trouble is, can you imagine ringing up the Royal Navy and saying, hello, I'm from that pokey motoring programme on BBC Two. Would it be possible to borrow one of your Sea Harriers? You can imagine what the response would be. Yes, they were there in a jiffy. <laughs> so, top of the range Saab 95 Hot Aero versus Sea Harrier FA2. <laughs> and they're off. 2.3 litre, 250 horsepower turbo against 21,500 pounds of jet thrust. Harrier's off the ground and already doing 200 miles an hour. Saab's up to 58. <laughs> Plane's pulling 6G in the corners and the car's still lumbering down the first straight. It's another corner dispatch. And the pilot, yes, I think he's already got the finish line in his crosshairs. And the car, yes, well, here it comes up to the second corner, which is Chicago. Oh, with an understeer on the way in. And lots and lots of understeer on the way out. And the plane, yes, there it goes, across the finishing line. It's right of the Valkyries, or as he knows it, the music from the Pirelli advert. With a follow through. It is quick. It is quick. Stig's not giving up. I like to see that in a man. But he's nearly lost it going into Gamble. He's just held it and across the hole that the plane's waiting for him. That's nice. <laughs> what about that? Well done. Brilliant. The pilot did go a bit wide in some of the corners, didn't he? He did go oh, wide. He did say with a Harrier it would be possible to actually follow the confines of the track, and it would still be faster than the car. But we said, no, 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 go for it. So he did run a bit wide. I mean, over this corner, he was over Brighton. Round here, it was Oxford. Coming round that one, he actually hit Edinburgh. <laughs> but I have the time. You want to know? Go on. 31.2 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> so, if you could pop that up for us there, Richard. <laughs> The new, that's the new fastest thing ever to go around our <laughs> track. I might laugh to yep. get that record. Right, the car, 137.9. That's nearly <laughs> a second and a half slower than a, a Honda Civic. Ah. Which takes us back to the original question. 
Why do those people who have SARBs have that smile on their face? Well, I went back out there to find out. To drive, it's nice in a quiet, relaxing, long jet fighter sort of way. Middle of the road motoring from the country that invented middle of the road pop. Like it costs £27,000, not quite as much as you'd pay for the German alternatives, but not a bargain either. Inside, I can find very little that would put that smile on the face of the graphic designers and the architects and the dentists who buy these things. The thing I like most of all is this satellite navigation system. You get a touch screen and it lets you choose your language. And you can have English UK and English US. Sort of exactly the same, but with extra adenoids. <laughs> Also, like the performance. Like all the fastest Euro boxes, it gets from 0 to 60 in 6 or so seconds and keeps on going to 155. The only trouble is that to get that level of performance from a big car, you need a lot of power. And that's OK with a Mercedes or a Jaguar or a BMW, because they're rear-wheel drive, but this isn't. <laughs> An engineer at Saab once told me that the absolute limit for a front-wheel drive car is 220 brake horsepower. This has 250. Handling is just hysterical. It's like driving a fast, bouncy castle. But if you push too hard in a corner, you just go into a world of smoke and brimstone. Come out of the corner on the other side, and everything's fine. Except you need some new tyres. This car has a five-star safety rating. That's the top. But I suspect it has nothing to do with the strength of the passenger cell or the energy absorbance of the front, and everything to do with the fact it's almost impossible to crash it. So, to sum up, it has foolproof handling, it's quite fast, quite good-looking, and it's quite hard to think why anyone would buy this instead of a Merc. Perhaps, though, I'm missing something. Perhaps it's at the cutting edge in some other unusual way. Somehow, I doubt it. You see, this car is part Vauxhall Vectra, part Saab 9000. And the 9000 is so old that I think I'm right in saying Helen of Troy had one. I think that was the car that the suspension was made out of myrrh. You have to dig very deep to find the point of this car, but it's worth it. Because it's there all right. Firstly, it's eco-friendly. The trees hug it as it goes by. And then there's the mid-range clout. The rate this thing goes in second gear from 40 to 70 miles an hour is just... <laughs> that is sensational! For overtaking a lorry, never mind a 5 Series BMW, this'll do it quicker than a Porsche 911 Turbo. So there you are, the Saab 95. Good in parts, better in others. What a nice programme it was tonight. Yeah. Really was. And a nice Saab. I really like that. It's nice. I, dro I drove a really nice Subaru. Exactly. I didn't drown, which is nice. nice. And we had the lovely Bentley. That was mm. very nice. Most of all, though, we had some fantastic people here. And I want you to give them a round of applause from HMS Invincible and Brawler Harrier. <laughs> And that's all we've got time for, I'm afraid. See you next week. Bye.